been so long. How do we start these? Ahoy, mateys. Good, e good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I think it's a good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is It is evening as we do this. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Nancy Drew Top 10 with my brother, Julian, and I. How's it going, everybody? It's been a while. It's been a crazy summer. A lot of stuff has happened. It's been a crazy day, too. It's been a crazy few days. Julian and I have been working overtime. And we are now together making a Top 10 that we've been pondering for a while. I can't believe how long it's been since we've made a Top 10 or just any type of list. Because I feel like it's kind of what the foundation of our channel was built on. It's, it's and we fun. just haven't done a top 10 in forever. I've missed them because I love list making. It is also of great importance to us that we do not milk the top 10 formula because if we wanted to, we could be making videos like top 10 best key decals that Nancy picks up. And uh, needless to say, that wouldn't be very entertaining. So we found a pretty fun topic, a nice middle ground, I think. Yes, I think it's a the list that deserves to be made. Probably probably more than Room's Nancy stays in, if I'm being honest. <laughs> and that is top 10 most mean Nancy Drew moments. Everybody knows that classic charm and spunk Nancy has. She's the sassy teenage detective, and sometimes she can go a little overboard with the sass. Sometimes she can be a mean bitch. <laughs> to put it lightly, there are some moments in the series where Nancy completely oversteps boundaries with absolutely no social cues or grace, and they really, really stand out more and more bizarre. Some things in the list are going to be a little bit goofy. Some of them are downright crimes, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but otherwise, it should be a fun list. Don't take it too seriously, of course. It's just our opinion, as always. And likewise, if there's anything you think we missed, on this list because there are so many times when Nancy does something disrespectful then do let us know and we will try to get them in the top commerce song or at least see if you can broaden our horizons otherwise are you ready to jump into top 10 I think so coming in at number 10 on our list we have the opening moments of game number 19 Castle Malloy in which Nancy Drew is faced with a I guess you can call it a puzzle it's not much of a puzzle because it's so obvious what you're supposed to do in short, you have to throw it between a pebble or a small boulder at Kyler's <laughs> beautiful castle window. Any sane person, of course, to try to get Kyler's attention at the beginning of the game would throw a pebble. What can Nancy Drew do, you might be asking? Why, she can throw a boulder <laughs> through the window of this centuries-old castle. It's so bizarre that the game gives the player the choice of, you know, if you want, you can throw three little pebbles and make these little dinks to get Kyler's attention. Or, if Nancy just wants to pop into game 19 guns blazing, you can just throw a rock through her window. It makes no sense, and there is just like, like... Kyler doesn't even seem like she's too perturbed about it, because, like, Rock goes through the window, and then she just walks over, looks down, and just gives Nancy a friendly wave, like, oh, there's my maid of honor. Awesome. Yeah, a nice greeting with a boulder through the window. And it's all Denal's fault, too, because he wouldn't let us come in because the fairy people or some reason. It's just, it doesn't make any sense. Like, <laughs> it's a silly moment. Imagine it happening in real life. Yeah, like, if I got locked out of my friend's house, if I threw rocks at the window, I would not get invited back. Mm-hmm. Granted, there are some castle's walls missing in Castle Malloy. It is not on market conditions. It is not the best upkept castle. But it's you still don't go throwing rocks to the few remaining windows. And she's like a maid of honor, too. She's like a very important guest. <laughs> this is true. Not, not classy, Nancy Drew. Not the way to kick off a wedding celebration. Coming in at number 9, we have a moment from game 14, which is actually the first ever instance in the series where Nancy Drew can actually pick an alternate ending to the game. Albeit it's disguised in the middle of the game, where Nancy can choose whether or not to get Heather McKay, Minette's assistant, fired. So basically, Minette has this box called the Dodo Box, which she puts all of her threatening letters into so that she can just let them be consumed by the omniscient, omnipotent power of the Dodo and not have to worry about them. I don't know, Minette is crazy. That's beside the point. One of the letters in this box is clearly different from all of the other ones, and so Nancy does a little bit of research and figures out that it was clearly a fake made by Heather so that she could just have a little revenge moment and send a mean letter to Minette anonymously. Nancy then has the choice to tell Minette that Ezra Key is out to get her, or she can let it slide because it is clearly a harmless gesture. And spoiler alert, it is harmless. After we come to the revelation Heather is the one who's kind of anonymously getting at Minette here, we have a very heart-to-heart -heart conversation with her, and it's the first time that her character kind of opened up to me and I started to be like her because she felt genuine for once. After this very nice conversation where she comes clean, she says it was, it didn't cause any harm and all this, you have the chance to turn her into Minette, which actually is very interesting because it affects the end game and Heather's outcome with a lot of scenarios. The butterfly effect goes crazy with this decision because if you do, it is pretty brutal. Heather loses her job and will then give Nancy a mean phone call. By the way, she disappears from the office. She's gone for the game. Nancy gets a mean phone call where Heather tells her, I was considering making you a runway model. 
Is she bluffing? Is she just trying to get back at Nancy? No, she's not bluffing, because if you do keep Heather's secret, in the endgame letter of Danger by Design, it is revealed that Nancy is made a runway model from Annette's spring show. And that's pretty funny, because... <laughs> two polar opposite endings for the character, one of them so sad. And you know what's even worse about this, is that Heather is clearly the glue holding this place together. Yes. Manette is so mentally and emotionally unstable that nothing would be getting done without Heather's guidance, and we even find out that in her free time, she's also taken up fashion design as a hobby. And she's a very hardworking, like, nice person. And you just have the, you get the choice to ruin her life, pretty much. And she's the only other American, too! <laughs> I've had enough of these accents in this game. Coming in at number 8 on our list, we have a game over sequence in Curse of Blackmore Manor that is so gratuitous and completely unnecessary that I am stunned as to why they left it in the game. This is Mrs. Drake's wake-up call. If Nancy is exploring the castle after dark when everyone is asleep, she has the option to come to one of the doors in the hallway and go, This must be Mrs. Drake's room. You'd think it would end there! But it doesn't. Nancy then has the option to start knocking on Mrs. Drake's door, because, you know, something important can't warning. And as Mrs. Drake continues to snore, every time you click on the door, Nancy knocks louder and louder. The third time you knock, Nancy is banging on the door and shouting, Mrs. Drake, are you in there? <laughs> and it's so stupid. Mrs. Drake starts screaming and has night terrors, <laughs> and then Nancy gets kicked out of Blackmore Manor by Mrs. Who is it? Petrov? Yeah. Linda over the phone? Hello, Mrs. Drake! Are you in there? Mrs. Drake! Ah! I do remember Mrs. Drake's distinct scream now as you keep banging and banging. Like, and it's absolutely for no reason, too. Yes! You'd think maybe the manor's on fire. No, Nancy just wants to wake her up in the dead of night. I have some detective questions that can't wait till morning! The fact that it exists is just, a. Uh, it goes to show what kind of a person Nancy can be lacking social cues and whatnot. Absolutely. Coming in at number 7 on our list, we have a feature from number 28, Ghost of Thornton Hall, in which Nancy Drew accuses Harper as dressing up as her dead sister Charlotte. This is the most tactless and, like, ham-fisted accusation Nancy's made since she accuses Millie Strathorn of being the culprit in Game 2. It's like there's nothing going through Nancy, like, there's no, like, ramifications, there's no severity in this question, it wouldn't unlock a lot of trauma. In fact- Harper's clearly deranged as it is, and you just- what? It's so funny because Nancy asks the question like she really hasn't thought it through, and then Harper goes on complete rhetorics and says, <laughs> The hits keep coming. You're a doll, a real peach. Ew! Oh, you're not kidding, are you? Am I dressing up as my dead sister for kicks? After the only family member everyone can agree on has gone missing? Is that what you're asking? Yes. That's the question. The implication was more or less added by you. No, I am not, so shut it! She's very, uh, quirky, but geez, <laughs> you don't go around asking that. I mean, without even any proof? Just pure conjecture? Oh, I mean, a crazy lady living under the house. She must be responsible for the ghost hauntings. No, the Thornton family is just that weird. She's actually not the bad guy. <laughs> Coming up at number six, this is actually my personal favorite entry on the list. It's a short one, it's a sweet one. This is again, Blackmore Manor. Nancy asking about Jane's guinea pig. This one's gonna be really quick. I don't, I, this is probably a textbook example of Lonnie Manella reading her lines off that they gave her without the actual context and nuance of the situation. Where basically, Nancy picks up a portrait on Jane's desk of a guinea pig. And she says, you had a guinea pig? And she's all excited, and Jane goes, yes, but it died. And then Nancy... You had a guinea pig? Yes, but it died. When? When? When did it die, Jane? <laughs> and it is so tone deaf. It is the funniest moment in that game to me. It's kind of a silly entry on the list, but it's kind of been an inside joke between Jamie and I for years now. It, it is just a, I think Jamie's actually correct in that Lonnie Manella did not know in what tense to read these lines. It was probably read all together. You had a guinea pig? When? Right. And, and then they, <laughs> the, when they made the game, they edited it so they cut it in half. And it's so, so <laughs> cringy to listen to. What's even funnier is that Jane's like clearly like depressed bringing it up. Like, yes, it, it died. <laughs> and Nancy doesn't even apologize or anything. All right, that was a quick one. Moving on to number five. Okay, number five, honestly, this one... I, I got like, me in my feels, man. Yeah, it, it like makes me like mad at Nancy. It makes me mad that we play as this character. <laughs> but in game number 24, The Captive Curse, 
you can be very rude, a straight up dick to Lucas. There, in, in your first conversations with Lucas, you're getting to know this kind of silly little boy that's running around the castle, clearly grown up here, but then it starts to evolve into a much deeper conversation about Lucas's personal life, his mom and dad, his lack of friends, what school is like, and Nancy can choose a combination of conversation topics that are so rude to Lucas, and it just shames him for having no friends and for being a social outcast, and it clearly has a toll on Lucas. You, If you choose these conversation topics, Lucas becomes very sad, he starts to dismiss Nancy, he doesn't want to talk anymore, and it's just horrible social cues. That's enough. I think you're the one causing oh, we're the playing silence. hardball. I don't even know why you're here, and, and why you're bugging me. Oh, you oh my gosh, I feel so bad now. Oh, we got him to dismiss us? That's terrible. Nancy, We're terrible. Nancy no. was just hounding the kid. No. I've never picked that dialogue option before. No. Oh, I feel terrible. Who are you to be asking this young boy these questions, Nancy? It's just, it's so rude. There's no reason for it. I mean, the game kind of wants you to suspect Lucas is the monster because he doesn't get enough attention in his home life or something. But that's not what it is to it. Lucas is semi-fortunate and fortunate to grow up in a castle, which means that he doesn't get out much, doesn't get to meet any friends. It's no fault of his own. It's just a product of his circumstances. Oh, so what do you mean you have no friends, Lucas? Why is that, huh? Nancy has a lot of moments on this list where she's just mean to kids. <laughs> she's just picking on a 12-year-old boy. <laughs> and the kids always live in castles in Europe. <laughs> Moving on to number four on this list. This is a moment that I think many of you probably expected to see higher up. This is the lethal option in game 23 to continuously ask every suspect about the dead mother of the Shimizu family, Kasumi. So there's still three more items on the list above this one, even though this one is commonly paraded in the franchise community as the rudest thing Nancy can do. Nancy finds an article once she fixes a portrait of the late Kasumi Shimizu that basically recounts Kasumi's death and how she was found dead in the spa. Unfortunately, Nancy does not speak Japanese, but it's a picture of an article that clearly depicts the dead mother of the Ryokan family. And so Nancy then has the option to take it to every single person and ask, could you please translate this article that is clearly about the death of a loved one? You can yeah. ask you can ask Kasumi's daughters, Kasumi's son-in-law, if you can't render all that Kasumi's way. Kasumi's mom. And Kasumi's mom, yes. You can put the article denouncing her dead daughter in her face and say, could you please tell me what this says? I just, I, I'm, I'm learning Japanese. I, I've been taking Rosetta Stone for a couple weeks now. It's so hard to listen to. And if you ask Miwako, Yumi and uh, Takai aren't so bad about it. If you show it to Miwako, it's game over. You, you mm -hmm. literally just get thrown out of the Ryokan. Don't you get like one chance to show her it first and then she like flips out and says, never show me this again or something? Or is it just straight to a game I over? I think it's straight to game over. I can't remember what it is. What's even worse though is that even after the first time, like it just lingers in the conversation. It stays there. Topic. It's always you know, an option. If, if you're just playing the game on autopilot, you're surely going to click it <laughs> accidentally at least once. <laughs> to which you're just gonna get thrown out. It's like the carousel hauntings from Hauntings of uh, Carousel. <laughs> and it's so funny because it's it's lethal. It literally costs you a death every time you do it. It's just horrible. Coming in now to the top three of Nancy's rudest moments in the game, we have featuring a walkthrough we just did. Game number 22, Trail of the Twister, in which Nancy can continuously ask Pa where Ma is. But get this, ladies and gentlemen, continuing to ask him after Nancy knows that she's dead. This is bizarre how rude this is of Nancy. She's interrogating an old man about the death of his beloved wife. For context, in the first part of the game, you can see an article. It's not mandatory, and Nancy doesn't remark if you look at it. There is a newspaper clipping in Scott Varnell's cluttered office that is literally titled Gone with the Wind, A Town Says Goodbye to Ma. And it's literally an article about how Ma, the matriarch of this little town in Oklahoma, died to a tornado. Car just went by real quick. Died to a tornado that was partially Scott Varnell's fault because they couldn't get the community funding to get tornado sirens for the whole county. Okay, so where this goes very sour is maybe understandably you can get away with asking this question once. Once you do, Paul gets very like uneasy. He's very uncomfortable uh, that this question is around. Like, uh... Yeah, he, he's he's clearly making up a lie, but like he's quick to dismiss it, and he, you can tell he didn't appreciate it. Okay, conversations dropped, right? Wrong. Nancy Drew will bring this up at least two to three more times in the game. Like, hey, when's Ma getting back? I'd love to meet her. Sure. Th 
this is a, mm. a relatively rough one. Act. Oh, what is your problem, Nancy? Mm. I thought we were past this. I thought we were past this, Nancy. How can you? S this is terrible. We have and, to ask it. And Nancy knows too clearly. Oh my god. Oh god, dude. For, for the completionist. Look at how sad he looks right now. He knows it's gonna. For a completionist, we have to do it. Where's Ma? Still not here? Oh! <laughs> nope. She, uh, she had to drive over to Chickasha. Lumbago. Sisters Lumbago's acting up. Anything else I can help you with? Oh! The pain. You can see the pain in his eyes because it's like they wrote this exchange to be like, oh, the player is going to be so shocked when they find out that Ma <laughs> is actually dead this whole time. But if you read the newspaper, you know she's dead from the start. And it's like, why can't I even ask him this troubling question? But even if you didn't read the newspaper, it's very easy to infer, okay, she's out of the picture. She's gone. Just after the first interaction. And then it just keeps going. It Where just... is she? I'd love to meet her. Where oh, is yeah. she? When's Ma going to be back? I mean, her name's on the building. It's yeah. so, so harsh. And the reason that we put this above Kasumi Sumi Shimizu is because game 23 has a very touching ending subplot where you can kind of confront every character about Kasumi's death and realize that they all blame themselves and vicariously Nancy can help find all these three family members and I, I guess Rentor is kind of a family member he can help find she can help find all of them some closure about the event and help them believe that they should stop blaming themselves there is no such subplot for Pa. You never see Pa acknowledge that Ma is gone. He never brings up his grieving. Nancy never apologizes or said, that must have been really hard for you. I lost my mom when I was a kid. It's, it's so stupid. Nancy literally just dredges up terrible memories for this guy and then never revisits it again. They say nothing about it in the ending letter. Nothing at all. It's a complete background disguised subplot of the game that is still very much in the open. It's just a great A example of Nancy like, being rude, no social cues, typical good old Nancy Drew. Yep. Coming in now at number two. This was my pick for number one, but Julian convinced me that number one is no, number, maybe a little worse. Number one is objectively worse. Okay, okay. This is still horrible. It is pretty horrible. Number two is Nancy's entire relationship with Ned Nickerson. Drops the mic. I should just end the video right here. That's... Nancy is just... An asshole girlfriend. She, <laughs> the amount of times that Nancy has stood up this guy. I, game 24, he's, he's just like, hey, I got a, I got this special dinner put together. Uh, what are you getting here? He's just like, oh, hi, Ned. I'm in Austria. I'm literally in Austria, Ned. I'm, I'm, I might have to take a rain check. I forgot to tell you, I'm across the world right now. Ah, uh, yeah. So, you know, the, uh, the Hardy Boys are here, though. Uh, it's really cool seeing the Hardy Boys in Hawaii. I, oh, Ned, I'm sorry that it, oh, it's, it's raining in River Heights. That's that's really cool, Ned. Uh, <laughs> hey, hang on. Frank and Joe and I are going surfing now. It's, <laughs> it's so heartbreaking to just think of Ned, like the dog who gets left at home all the time. It, he repeat like, in every game he's a phone contact he'll call you and be like damn I, I really wish you invited me like I really wish I was on this beach with you I, it sucks being here literally every game that he's a phone contact is like wow sounds like you're having a lot of fun Nancy I guess I'll just kick it back and chill in River <laughs> Heights even in the game where Nancy is in her hometown River Heights Ned's process his entire role is just to be subjugated to take Nancy's worst enemy out on a date to squeeze her for information <laughs> But things really come to a to come to a head in game number 30 no 32 sorry she yeah. of darkness uh, Where Nancy can just straight up tell Ned. Yeah, yeah, it's not gonna work out. I, I don't love you back Sorry. Now that is optional, and I don't know what kind of monster would. I yeah. mean, actually, it is kind of mercy to let Ned go at that point. But <laughs> Ned starts like professing his love for Nancy over the phone because that game takes place on their anniversary, mm -hmm. and Nancy forgot it, mm -hmm. and she's in Iceland. Like that's five time zones ahead of him. Regardless, it's um, it's ridiculous. Uh, Nancy doesn't deserve Ned. No. Ned, hit me up if you need to talk. Yeah, we're team Ned. Here. DMs are open. J Discord link is in the description. Yep. Uh, <laughs> that'll be it then. Moving on to the honorable mention, we do have one honorable mention before getting to number one, and it is an honorable mention, because it's not actually done by Nancy, it's more so coerced by Nancy. But it's easily like top three material, because it is sadistic. Mm -hmm. This is game 17, where Nancy pushes and prods Bess along and says, Oh, go on, you have to, you, you gotta, you gotta ask this poor retail worker to see if he can find a receipt and figure out what this guy sold to him. And Bess is like, okay, Nancy, how am I supposed to do that? Nancy goes, ball is in your court, Bess, take it away. <laughs> and she tortures this man. 
<laughs> sneezing powder for minutes on end, hot sauce that destroys the man's stomach. Which he gave a warning about. <laughs> yeah. No, you just destroy the guy, and you, it's all in the name of distraction, so you can get a few quality minutes back there snooping through his stuff. Ha, the but second you, time, you steal his merchandise. <laughs> true, but it's actually, it's like not, you don't take into account how Lamont's going to like physically be in all of this. It's just like, oh, so here you go, Lamont, let me, uh, oh yeah, this will, this will hurt for a long time. Well, Lamont look, is the essential worker, and he's, uh, treated very poorly. Yeah, no, it, it's, I mean, Nancy doesn't know the extent of it, maybe, but it is just, you, we need justice for Lamont, ladies and justice gentlemen. Justice for Lamont, I couldn't agree more. Uh, anyways, if there was a top ten most sadistic best Marvin moments, this is number one, two, three, four, and five, but this is top ten meanest Nancy, so we put it at honorable mention, even though Nancy gives the order, but I guess we'll just have to squeeze it in as a bonus spot. Number one, Julian, which you think is worse than Nancy, kiting net along, apparently. Yeah, I, I would say... I'd say this is a little worse. We're going back to game number 28, ladies and gentlemen, Thornton Hall, in which Nancy has the choice to uh, watch Clara burn to death. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can save her, by the way, but you can also choose not to save her. And that's not a game over. That's a game ending. There is an end game letter written specially for the purpose if the player decides they want to let Clara Thornton die. In which you, it's like people still see that there's ghosts. There's a, there's a second ghost there's now. There's two ghosts now. Home. Clara Thornton's a ghost. Furthermore, you can also just say goodbye to Harper and Clara. <laughs> or not Clara. Uh, Charlotte. Yeah. No, not Charlotte. Can, Jessalyn. I'm getting well, all these names mixed up. You, you can just abandon everybody and be very selfish, which I get, like, maybe if this were real life, like, it might feel a little different, but, like, clearly, you do have time, you have more than enough resources to get everyone out safely. Nancy can just choose to, peace, yo, the house is on fire. Clara dies! <laughs> okay, I mean, to be fair, Harper and Jessalyn get hospitalized in the ending where you abandon them. Yeah. But still, that's still not good. It's still bad. It's negligence. It <laughs> is negligence. <laughs> it's, it's just unbelievable. The game gives you two choices. First, you can leave everyone. Then you can leave just Clara. Both times, Clara dies. Like, two of the three endings results in the death of a suspect that can be prevented. All you gotta do is the clock puzzle, which I admit, I hate the clock puzzle. But it's not even on a timer, I don't think. And you know what I think is, like, really driving the nail into the coffin here is that in the endgame letter, Nancy's like... Gee, I wish I did things differently. She like, ima tells imagine you. the regret and a haunting she would feel for the rest of her life. Exactly. I could have saved Clara. She burned to death, and now she's with her dead, dead daughter. Also, <laughs> there's a huge butterfly effect of this death in the family because it is said that Wade completely disappears from the family tree, mm -hmm. and Savannah keeps on sending him letters and trying to call him, but because she misses him, and like, it's it's just sad for everyone involved. Her interactive. What were you thinking? Almost as bad as Nancy asking about Jane's guinea pig. <laughs> so that concludes our top 10 list for top 10 meanest Nancy moments. I am sure that we missed some of them. Some of them we had to be a little creative to find. Uh, comment down below what you think we missed. There's one thing for sure. Nancy will always be that sassy teenage detective. A very accurate assessment, I agree. Otherwise, if you have got any more cool ideas for top 10s, go and throw them down in the comments. Uh, do you want to say that we have a plan for Ranking Series Episode 7, but I think we've kind of revised our idea of how we wanted to approach it. Because originally, the final episode of the Ranking Series was going to be us accumulating all the scores of the Nancy Drew games and ranking them objectively. Except it's not objective at all, we're starting to realize, and that we do have a lot of bias. It's kind of like making things a bit murky. But we have an idea. It'll be a good full feature-length video again and it should be coming hopefully soon. With that being said, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Been really appreciative of your patience this summer. It's been a crazy one for us. And don't forget, everybody, to vote for Holt. Vote for Holt.